So happy new year everybody and uh, thank you so much for joining the call at this time of the year to um, everyone in the Chris team as well as some um, observers who are joining the call today. So um, we do have a couple of uh, Chris team members already so let's start the call and then I'll first start from confirming who's here at the call. Um, so I see Andre Robertchevsky from RIPE, um, Craig Noon, AP Nick, Ernest Afrinik, Esteban Luscano from LACNIC region, um, I believe, um, John Sweeting, Aaron, Michael Abejuela, Aaron, uh, Nurani Impuno, Paul Randick. So these are the Chris team members that I see on the call and um, I also see, well under the name of Herman Valdez, I was informed that actually um, Martin from NRO Secretariat is actually um, taking, um, taking um, facilitating, uh, helping us facilitate the call today and I also see Loriana Pavan, I believe she's also from the NRO Secretariat as well. So these are the people that I see on the call who are involved as the um, Chris team or the NRO Secretariat. Is there anybody else who's at the call um, as Chris team member who I haven't called a name? No? Nope. Okay, so um, let's go into the agenda. And the first agenda item is actions review as always. And then um, action item number three, feedback from the community. That's, this is the part that I'd like to take um, some time to discuss, um, not just to confirm the status of continued topics from the last call, but there are actually a couple of new um, important topics being raised on the um, in our old global mailing list. So let's discuss uh, how we're going to handle these issues. And then our um, next step um, is to confirm the team's general direction per issue. And then we'd like to seek for volunteers to work on wording on the um, on the draft to submit to ICG, as well as how we communicate on the um, on the global NRO mailing list as well. And lastly, um, it's more of an administrative um, point. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I, I'm not being clear enough. So I'm talking about agenda no item number four, and then I'm, I would like to also cover 4C, which is more of an administrative matter of updating the issues list, where we, um, this is the list that's being raised on the um, NRO global mailing list that we actually um, compile on the Excel file. And then I think uh, John and Wandua has uh, volunteered to um, to compile them uh, for the first uh, list. We need to keep it updated um, and I'd like to um, confirm how we work to continue updating this list. And then lastly is agenda item number five. I uh, would like to confirm about the date of the next meeting. So is there anything else that you'd like to um, cover in the agenda today? No? Nope. So um, then let's move on to the second part of the agenda, so actions review. I, I believe I see minutes from the last meeting is already posted on the NRO um, website and then so 2A is done and 2B I, I, I believe this is done as well on the recording um, of the past um, Chris team um, meetings has been provided in MP4 format and I, I did confirm that um, it's able to see from the YouTube. So um, up to here, is there anything that um, NL Secretariat would like to add? No? No, we're, we're working on converting the rest of the recordings to MP4 format and they will be available shortly. Thank you very much for this help. I really appreciate the Secretary's help for uh, working on this. Um, so that's including the past meeting. Uh, right? Yeah. So, Thank so, you so, so much. Just to confirm uh, what Laureana said. Uh, sorry, I was having problem with the microphone before. But uh, yes, we we are um, to um, the, the previous meeting and uh, 
I will report once this that is completely done. Thank you, Herman, for this update. Understood. So, and then, um, so let's confirm action on number 2C. So, I shared some list of issues um, that's on the Excel, and those are the issues that's being raised on the global NRO mailing list. And I think the idea is to share this list uh, with, uh, with the community so that the community is aware of the status of our discussions, on the cross chain discussions, on which issues that's being raised on the global mailing list has already been um, completed and how, how we, we, well, we're working at it, on it in addition to communicating with the, um, on, on the mailing list. So, um, do we have the status update from the NRO Secretariat about this? Uh, sorry, Sumi, my, my line is not very good. Uh, could you repeat the last, the last part? Uh, sure. So, um, may I confirm wh whether um, this Excel list um, of issues that we've compiled um, is already up on the NRO website or um, is this still um, being worked on or whether this was not uh, recognized and as an action item in the first place? Oh, it's, it's in the website, uh, Isumi. Um, in fact, I'm just uploading the last version right now. So you will be able to see it in the following one, two minutes. Thank you, Herman. So I'll confirm in maybe um, after I go through Action 2D. So, um, so Action 2D is this is reflecting the issues being raised on the um, on the Chris, um, on this Excel uh, list sheet that I've mentioned. Um, and I, I did actually send the latest update um, on the on the um, Christine mailing list about 20 minutes ago. So I hope, well, I, you probably didn't have time to um, see this in details, but um, we'd like to go over those issues um, in details in agenda not item number three. So if there's anything that you would like to, um, you have questions at this stage on action review, including um, especially on 2D, then um, please raise it. Um, Christine, is there, do you have any questions? No, nope, I don't see any questions. And um, let me see the status of 2C. So um, on which URL is this uh, list added? I'm looking at this uh, Christine um, web page where we have the, the charter, the members, and then the each um, Christine timeline meetings. Is that is that where you have updated the uh, issues list, woman, or is there another URL that we should take a look or to see? Uh, it's in the Crisp team uh, page. Um, can you make a refresh and see? Maybe you can see it now. You can make a refresh of the Crisp team uh, page in the general website. Thank you. I think I saw something uploaded. Um, I haven't had time to take a click at that content in, um, to see whether this is the, the correct one, but um, I, I do see something uploaded. Um, yes, I think this is the, I, I believe this is the right uh, version. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, Herman, for uploading this uh, very quickly. So, um, I saw, oh, and I thank you, Loriana, for sharing this uh, link. Um, on the chat room. So I think if people click there, then, um, Lorianne, is this a link to the latest um, status issues? That's the list to the Chris team page. I'll, I'll post the link to the latest status spreadsheet in a second. I just, I just posted uh, the, the one directly to the, uh, to the, to the file. 
Yes. Oh, thank you. Yes. So thank you. So um, so those of you who who are who 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 are at the call, if you click to the link of um documents from the seventh meeting, then you're able to see the state the latest status um issues in Excel, where um including all the um feedback that's given on the global um list. So um has if everybody has managed to see see the link, then I'd like to move to agenda item number three, confirming feedback from the community. So um so let's confirm uh, firstly confirm if there are any feedback from other RIL community lists. Um so I'd like to suggest that if there is any region that you, you have any discussions in your regional list, then um, please um, share it um, here. Is there any region where you have had um, discussions since the last meeting? So none from Afrinic regional list, so thank you, Alan. And nothing from APNIC region as well. Um, just to share about the, uh, the, the planned um, WebEx meeting on this uh, on the 30th. Um, we we only had four participants, so we actually decided to organize um, another opportunity on the set uh, on the 6th of January, where we hopefully would be able to have uh, more people with without this holiday situation. So we'll keep you informed about this. And uh, Craig, um, do you have anything you'd like to add from the AP integration? No, uh, Izumi, thank you very much. Um, yes, we are, we'll reschedule it for next Tuesday and we'll hopefully get more people then. Thank you, Craig. And nothing from the LACNIC and nothing on Aaron. And yes, thank you, John. I, yes, I, I, I see that Andrew Dahl from Aaron region has been very actively participating. Uh, on the global list as well, and I, I note that he's been uh, speaking to you, um, John, privately. Um, so, oh, and then you encouraged him to post on the NRL list. This is great. Thank you so much, John. Um, so, how is the situation on the right region? I don't see any comments. So, um, may I assume this is um, being quiet? Um, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, that's Andre. Hi. Um, it's been pretty quiet. Uh, and as we mentioned before, we asked people to direct comments to the Anna transfer mailing list, but I don't think we saw many comments there either. Thank you, Andre. And I do see um, Hans Peter Holland has been um, actively participating on the global list, and who I believe is from the right region. Yes, yeah, so sorry. Thank you, Andre, for the update. Sorry, Narani here. Sorry for jumping in. That's correct. Um, and also, Hans Petter is also the chair of, of Right uh, and has been deeply involved in the Right discussion. So um, I think his comments also represent some of the discussions from the Right community. Thank you. Right, thank you, Nurani. So um, then I'd like to move to um, agenda 3B, status of continued topics. So um, let's start from um, the, the two big issues, the three big issues that I've listed in 2D, uh, continuation from the last meeting. Uh, one is the intellectual property rights related issues. The second is some of the details regarding the contract um, that will be um, we're, we're proposing to exchange with the IANA operator, and then lastly, um, some of the details related to review team. So let's start from um, IPR. I believe um, Andre has uh, volunteered to work on this, and he, he did actually uh, post the summary of the observation or on the uh, possible direction. So Andre, would you mind to give us an update? Yeah, sure. Um, so um, I think it was discussed uh, last last call. Um, we decided to separate the IPR issues into two main buckets and actually into three. Um, the first one being um, the uh, intellectual property rights uh, with regards to content of the registries, the kind of data that is that exists there. Uh, the tricky 
part here is that there is a um, section in the current NTIA contract that actually states that uh, U.S. government holds the rights uh, um, for those assets that were created uh, um, during the execution of the contract. Um, it's important that as a result of this transition, the IPR status of the registry is very clear and ensures the free unlimited access to the registry data. At the same time, I think it's, it's, it's hard to make a very strong statement in this case. I think that's why I proposed a slightly um, a vague statement, uh, pointing that that's an expectation of the area communities that the number resource registries are in the public, uh, public domain. And the, that the preference of the area communities uh, that all the parties acknowledge that as part of the transition. So that's, um, we can work on precise language, but that's uh, basically uh, the substance. Thank you very much, Andre. Um, I think it's um, very helpful that you've drafted this, including highlighting the fact that currently um, the, um, the NTIA contract states that the U.S. government is holding the right of um, um, what, whatever has been uh, great, um, has been what you call it, worked on uh, up until today, including the IANA.org. Um, the, the use of IANA.org um, domain and the contents of the registry. So I, I do, I think your, your summary and what you posted on the mailing list generally makes sense to me. I'd like to hear any observations from the others, especially with, the, with some legal expertise. I see a comment posted from Alan. Um, NTIA contract also has requirements for smooth transition to another operator if that is ever necessary. Yes, that's true. So I think that's why Andre has uh, made a comment, um, uh, is suggesting to include that in, in the document, but uh, trying to make the language a little bit less controversial. Um, that, that's my understanding. And um, Okay, maybe it's uh, easier for others to take more time to look at the exact language based on what Andre has posted on the mailing list. If that's the case, um, then maybe we, let's just give another 20 hours to see, um, to review Andre's suggestion, um, and then um, we welcome feedback on the mailing list um, within those um, time frame, 24 hours time frame, unless if people have something to say at this point. Hand, Andre. Yes, Izumi, just to clarify, uh, with regards to the second issue, the uh, property rights with regards to IANA.org and IAN trademark, uh, I think we had some discussion following my initial suggestion where you ask for more rational why ITF Trust should be a selected party. I think. I didn't provide exact language, I provide some logic. So comments on the logic would be appreciated. In the meantime, I'll try to uh, maybe uh, update the suggested text that will include some of the rationale that I provided. Understood, thank you. So it's not exactly the language, but it's more of a rationale. Yes, I think that's, that's fine. And, and thank you for um, agreeing to work on the language as well. So um, as I also mentioned on the mailing list, I, I'm actually okay to mention about possibly uh, trans, um, leaving this to the IATF trust as long as we, we have a clear rationale. And um, I'd like to confirm from other first team members whether you have any issues or questions related to this uh, suggestion on Alan. Uh, yeah, so personally, I think uh, the IETF Trust would be a good place to, to lodge this, the IPR. Um, but I have a concern that the CRISP team should not be inventing things ourselves. We should be getting input from the community. So uh, I think we should check with the community what they think. Certainly, Alan. Thank you for um, uh, highlighting this. And I, I think this was something that was actually mentioned as a part of the discussions, but I think it's a good idea to reconfirm that this is the direction that we're considering in our proposal and whether this makes sense to everybody. 
So, um, Andre, I believe you volunteered to um, to work on to confirm principles on, and direction within Christine. And I wonder if you would be willing to um, communicate uh, on this issue uh, with the NRO globalist as well, or do you prefer someone else to work on the communication on the NRO list? Oh, Craig, um, before I uh, confirm with Andre, I'll, let's go to Craig. Um, Izumi, thank you. Um, I, I just actually have a comment to Andre in relation to the IPR. Um, Andre, I think you've been mentioning access to the IPR, which is really, I think, what we need, rather than actually uh, stating that we need the transfer of the assets itself, um, because if there is going to be a change, then I think all you need is access to it. It could be a license. So um, so I'm just wondering whether actually uh, saying about a transfer of asset is actually asking, you know, it's too strong a language and asking for too much. Um, just comment from an intellectual property lawyer's perspective. Well, thank you for this, uh, for this comment. Uh, uh, if, if you let me just respond quickly, um, I think that uh, well, again, there are two issues. One is related, uh, from my perspective, one is related to the content of the registries. And here we are not specifically talking about transfers of rights. We are looking at some common statement uh, that the content of these registries remains in the public domain. Um, I don't know how legal the definition of public domain is, but that's at least the intention. With regards to IANA work and IANA trademark, um, well, right now, this is registered with ICANN, right? Um, the thing is uh, uh, why IETF Trust has suggested that um, if, because all communities, they work pretty independently. Well, they, they work in concert, but they defining their own arrangements with regards to IANA operator. It's not impossible that sometime in the future, there might be uh, different IANA operators for different communities, right? So. Um, I think it would be uh, appropriate to look for a neutral party in this case that will hold the IANA trademark and IANA.org uh, domain. In this case, it might, might make more sense to uh, arrange the transfer of those, of those assets, not the, the registries. I'm talking specifically about the second part um, as part of this transition rather than talking about ICANN licensing this to any future successors. Um, and, uh, sorry, just a response, and I, and I agree with you on the separation, um, but in relation to the trademark and into the domain name as well, there's no reason why a perpetual license to use the trademark will not be, suf will not be sufficient, and the trademark could be licensed for all of the users of the IANA functions. Um, I'm, look, I'm not arguing for ICANN's case, I'm, I'm just saying that uh, I'm just trying to, I suppose, put a perspective in terms of what what is really needed is access to those uh, rights in order to use all the three, the separate ones. Um, and, and my point really is that an access to it by way of a license will be sufficient for, for the community without actually a transfer of the asset. Um, but you know, look, if, if, um, if we, we think that the transfer of, look, Transfer of the asset obviously is the best thing, um, but it's just not necessary, and, and I wonder whether um, that would create a problem. But uh, obviously, um, just a, it's just my thought. Yeah, well, thank you for that, uh, Craig. Look, I was responding basically capturing the input from the community. I didn't create this input myself. So that's what I captured uh, as community input on the INA transfer mailing list. If, if you're thinking about a different proposal, uh, my suggestion would be send this to the list and we can see both proposals and discuss and maybe uh, decide on that. I think that's a good suggestion if that makes uh, sense to Craig as well. I think we can look at both and then compare and then make up our mind on which one to adopt for the actual proposal. So would that be okay with you, Craig? Uh, look, absolutely, yep. Okay, thank you. So I think from my point of view, I'm, you know, obviously from the RIR community, um, the best outcome would be for it to be transferred to something that we have, have you know, full access to. Um, but I just imagine that in any contract, um, a, sim a simple 
way of dealing with it would be simply to say that in any transition to a successor operator, we need to be given rights to any asset that's being current that's being used in order um, for the internet to you know for the IANA function services to be delivered continuously without interruption. Yeah, totally understand your point. So um, I think you, you're trying to um, come up with a way that looks more agreeable and and at the same time um, address the points that we want to cover uh, without possibly going too much into details. Um, so um, I think it would be good if you could uh, propose specific language together with the rationale and how our points will be covered by that. That might be helpful for us to understand uh, if we're comfortable with this or we feel that we should add more specific language or not. Okay, thank you, Craig, for agreeing to this. So we'll look forward to your suggestion and let's compare with um, uh, with what's already being posted by Andre. So um, as the next step are related to this, um, I think rather than just uh, confuse the community on just sharing with two or two different approaches, let's uh, seek to um, agree on which direction we will go as Chris team first. And then once we see that uh, there's agreement on the direction, um, we can share this um, on the uh, NRO um, global discussions list. So that's my suggestion for the next step. And uh, let me know if you have any um, comments, concerns, um, questions about this uh, next step on the uh, intellectual property rights. No? Okay. Then uh, let's uh, confirm the status for the con or hand up. Alan. Um, yeah, hi. Um, I wanted to, to give my personal opinion on the, the IPR issue. Um, yes, in a sense, a license would be sufficient. But on the other hand, if, if ICANN were to be removed as the operator of the IANA function, then I would have a problem with them continuing to hold the um, IANA trademarks and domain names. Uh, so from my perspective, it would be very much better if those assets were transferred rather than merely licensed. Paul. Uh, hello there, Izumi. Thank you. Um, I actually would like to share and support uh, the comment that Alan has just made. Um, I also think uh, even further to that, I think that, you know, you can always do the step we just talked about if that's the, less, the last step we can take. But I think if we can go ahead and transfer the beginning and suggest that, I think that's a, a much better road to go for. And I think that in, in supporting, for instance, uh, some of the other communities, for instance, the IETF, and supporting their proposal, I think the sooner we start uh, supporting other communities, I think uh, the better uh, in us reaching some kind of a common proposal that the ICG is going to have to bring forward to the U.S. government. So um, I do see this pointed out quite nicely uh, by the IETF, and I would like to see if that's something acceptable for the RIR community. Thank you for making this, uh, these points, uh, Alan and Paul. Um, so let me um, um, reconfirm with Craig if you are comfortable with this approach or you still want to discuss this. If that's if the latter case, then uh, let's stick to the initial idea of um, you know, reviewing your proposed uh, draft. And if you're okay with what's being raised um, as by Alan and Paul, then maybe we can um, work based on Andre's draft. So what, what, what's, how do you feel like, uh, Craig? Okay, so you don't have a problem um, based on working on Andre's um, um, draft um, basic direction. So um, I think we no longer need to compare the two drafts. So as a next step, I, it would be helpful, Andre, if you could help us draft more specific um, language in the draft. But since we already agreed on the general direction, um, let's share this um, basic principle and idea by Christine as, um, as soon as possible. And then we can seek um, for comments within the NRO global discussions list, whether people feel comfortable with this direction. Um, 
So would that make sense to everybody in Christian? And the second question, so let's uh, start with this. So is, does everybody in Christine um, feel comfortable with, with this direction? So work based on Andre's draft, Andre to draft um, more specific language, and then somebody will communicate on the um, NRO global discussions list about our general direction. Okay, no, okay, with uh, you, uh, Alan, thank you for expressing this. And uh, I don't see any objections. Thank you, Narani, for this uh, support for the direction as well. So, um, Andre, I'd like to confirm with you whether you are comfortable to communicate on the CRISP, um, uh, not the CRISP, um, the NRO global discussions list on the general direction, or would you prefer somebody, somebody else to work on this? Well, I have no problems communicating this to the island transfer. I just wanted to uh, clarify. Well, it also depends whether we want to communicate issue by issue, all issues at once. So if we go issue by issue, I'm comfortable communicating this to Anna transfer. Uh, if it's the bulk of the issues, maybe someone else, maybe you, Zumi, would be more, more appropriate to communicate this to the community. Uh, my second question, um, uh, so what's the agreement? Do we communicate the general direction with basically around the text that I sent to Chris team? Or should I prepare uh, a revised text uh, well, with suggestions, actual suggestions for the um, amendments in the draft and send that after um, Chris team reviewed that? Thank you for those questions. Um, so the first, uh, for the first question, I think um, some depending on the scale of the issues, we don't have to uh, communicate on on every single issues on the global um, IANA IANA um, NRO list. And I think people can confirm the latest uh, status based on this uh, Excel sheet that we 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 are sharing um, with the community. But with this IPR issue, it seems there's quite active discussions on the mailing list, and I think we do want to uh, explicitly uh, confirm whether people are comfortable with uh, leaving this um, to the IETF trust. So it would. I, I think it would be preferable, in my opinion, to um, confirm um, this uh, with the NRO list, um, unless everybody, anybody has other suggestions. Um, no comments. And then regarding your second question, I don't think we need to be specific about language as long as we share the basic principles and idea. And so just share that this is the direction that we're considering about the um, IPR issues. And uh, please let us know if the community feels differently. I think that would be sufficient. Um, would that clarify your question, Andre? OK, thank you. So that makes sense to you. Thank you, Andre. Thank you very much for volunteering for this. So let's get, I'll move to another issue on contract. Um, so the details of the some of the details of the contract that's being uh, suggested on the mailing list. Um, Alan, would you be able to give us an update? I uh, yes, Izumi. Um, I sent a message to the mailing list with my understanding of what we discussed about the contract. Um, I don't have it in front of me right now. I can get to it in a minute. Um, but as I recall, it was essentially saying that uh, we don't want to go into too much detail about the contract. We think that should be left to the legal team. And I also gave a list of items that I thought should be covered. Um, I did get some feedback saying that the um, I think it was from Sean Ojedeji in the Afrinic region, saying that the the legal team, in his opinion, should be doing what the community says, and that if if there are issues like the term of the contract, then it should be decided by the community, not by the legal team. And uh, I haven't responded to that, but it does make sense to me that. Um, uh, the community should be giving instructions to the legal team about what they think the contract should say. Um, so I think the way forward is uh, we should be 
discussing with the community what they think the term of the contract should be. Thanks. Thank you very much, Alan. I think that's consistent with my observation. And Andre? Yeah, well, I have a slightly different comment regarding the contract. I send this to a list as well. I think one thing that we probably need to highlight in this proposal is with regard to possible transition to a successor or successors, right? Because I think transition uh, is essential or, you know, orderly transition is essential for the continuity of the service and uh, is something that uh, is in the requirements of NTIA transition, right? So uh, the, there's sp specific provisions in the um, NTIA contract with regards to um, orderly transition to a successor. Um, and IETF, for instance, just for your information, reference those things as some of the clauses that the drafting team for the contract might consider including in the contract. So I think mentioning that orderly transition and some requirements for the orderly transition um, uh, seems to me appropriate in this, in this draft response. Thank you, Andre. Um, I, I'm not sure if I fully understood your um, point. So are you saying that um, we should actually um, list the conditions for the transitions in the contract? Or, or uh, I'm sorry, um, would you mind to um, clarify a little bit? Sorry for not uh, understanding your point uh, very yeah, well. I'm sorry, I probably wasn't very clear. Um, uh, what I basically meant that the contract, and that's something that we can include in the response, that the contract should should contain some provisions for the orderly transition to another operator upon termination of the contract. I understand very well. Thank you very much. So it's basically um, the conditions for terminating the contract. And I think um, I observed this is basically quite consistent with what we've been discussing in the first team, that we generally seem to feel that we should actually include this um, as, a, as a condition um, in, the, uh, in the contract, um, unless I'm hearing any objections at the call. And I'm hearing a couple of support to Andre's comment from Craig and Michael as well, so, and that's also um, my personal um, opinion and it seems to be consistent with, with what we've been discussing. So is there anybody else who feels differently? John, Sweeting, agreeing? Uh, so it's just not so much the conditions for the termination, it's just the requirements upon, yes, requirements upon the termination. Um, so, what would be required? Yes, I understood. Um, so to terminate the contract, this will be the kind of condi uh, the situation that would lead to um, terminate the contract. Is my understanding correct? Yes. Well, let me just cut and paste the, uh, uh, section C73 just to give you an idea what uh, NTA contract specifies as the um, uh, transition requirement. I'm not sure we need to include exactly this language, but that's something something that the contract should uh, provide. And I think that's our responsibility to request that the contract contains those conditions, not those exactly conditions, but some conditions that will ensure order the transition to another operator upon termination of the contract. So it's slightly different with the conditions. Oh, yeah on what conditions or, or why and how the contract could be terminated. It's more, if the contract is terminated, uh, the, uh, well, the, the current IANA operator should prepare for orderly transition, which might include training, education, you know, shipping database, whatever. But that's, that's not for, for our response, of course. Our response is much higher level, but uh, stipulating that those requirements should be in the contract, I think is very important for us. Yes, I, I understood. So it's like um, um, clearly mentioning the possibility that there should be an, um, there should be a possibility for um, delegating to another um, operator, and then um, and uh, what would be the conditions um, on on the transition. Um, so thank you for clarifying this, uh, Andre. And um, I see uh, most of the team members have explicitly. Um, press support for this um, to include this condition. 
So unless um, anybody at the call feels so differently um, and raised an opinion, um, I think um, I, I would like to suggest in, uh, including this as a part of our proposal and making it uh, very clear that we need this uh, um, we need this to be included in this um, in our proposal. Uh, is, is me, can I just say something quickly? Um, Andre, um, I think it's uh, in clause I.61, uh, 52.237 is actually the, entire, the, the kind of broader clause about continuity of the service. Yes, yes. In my reply, actually, an ITF uh, pointed to those two clauses, uh, the C clause that I just cut and paste, and I-61 that you just referenced, Craig. Absolutely correct. Okay, we're on the same page. Thank you. Okay, so um, if people feel comfortable to include um, this and I think our Craig needs actually also added. So is this from the existing? Um... Yes, I mean, this is from the existing uh, okay. INR um, anti IA contract. But that's the one that Andre has just yeah. mentioned mm -hmm. as well. So I think all we need is a paraphrase of, of yes, something like this as mm -hmm. is needed in the, right. in the contract. Thank you. Um, so I think we're clear about um, including um, this part in a proposal. Um, and then how about the other um, other issues? Other uh, what are the other details that has um, been requested to include? Um, Alan, do, do you keep track on um, what they could be? Um, the the only other detail that that comes to mind immediately is about the term of the contract. And uh, I'm really not sure what um, has been proposed there. Um, I just sent a message to the INA transfer list a minute ago asking for clarification um, from Sean, who has been uh, making comments about the contract duration. And I, you know, he says that it's important that we should tell the legal team what we want but I, I'm not sure what he wants. Oh, thank you for this, um, Alan. So, hand from Craig and Michael, please. So, first, Craig. Uh, thanks, Yusumi. I think uh, this seems to me to be uh, going into, again, the detail of the contract, um, and perhaps we don't need to have that sorted um, at this level. That's my point. Thank you, Craig. And my yes, hi everybody. Um, my my thought on this was that it's it's similar with what the issue we just talked about with Andre's uh, Andre's uh, text that we're trying to explore is that um, you know the overarching issue is is what we need. I mean, obviously the community does have to tell us um, what we should put in the proposal, and also the proposal will be the basis for how the legal team will move forward with let's say, negotiating the particular contract terms. So the overarching principle, so perhaps um, whether there should be a term or not, might be feedback we can uh, you know, elicit from the community. But you know, getting down to the details of how many years specifically and, and particular provisions like that might go a little bit too far and, and could also get us kind of hung up a little bit. And that's just kind of my thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. That sounds uh, consistent with uh, Craig's point made earlier and um, Rani. Thank you. Um, I, I uh, would like to generally agree with Michael. I, I thought I, I um, actually perceived a, a, a slight differentiation from what Craig was saying and that I think the feedback from Sean, which I actually agree with, was that uh, we, we need to leave, leave it to the legal team to actually do the wording, but the content needs to come from us and from the community. Um, so I agree with Michael's comment there that it's something we need to seek from the community. And I know that in the RAP community, there were some very strong um, opinions expressed, uh, ensuring that, that the, um, 
that it is basically up to us and not up to ICANN uh, to, to set the terms of this. Um, and I think that we would also want to avoid a situation where there are very specific requirements for termination of a contract. I think those things need to be up to, um, those things need to be defined in such a way that it is up to us whether or not we want to terminate the contract. I hope that was clear enough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so just to understand, uh, up to us, um, I assume you mean the community. And um, so I think there are two different us's. One is um, us as in the numbers community, and some people seem to differentiate um, the RIR legal team and the community. So um, yes, the community. Thank you, Nirani, for clarifying. So. I see my course point is that at the time of developing the proposal to ICG, then it's certainly worth um, defining certain sets of general principles on whether there should be clarity on certain um, terms of the contract or this element should be included and such. But it may be a little bit detailed to go into what exactly this term will be or um, the, the exact language and such. And so let me try to um, suggest um, what, may, may, what may be feasible by the time of submitting um, a contract to ICG and then as well as trying to incorporate our community's comment. So um, perhaps we can include and list on what elements we consider as important um, to be um, described in the contract. And then we certainly seek, um, these are the, um, seek for the uh, comments on the NRO global list. Okay, these are the conditions we think it's important to clarify in the contract. And then when we actually um, develop the, uh, on the contract itself, I th this is the step that I'd like to um, hear your feedback, whether, uh, as Nurani suggested, it's it's something that we should actually uh, try to develop the actual contract plan, um, contract uh, more in details, and then uh, coordinate with the community. Or, um, and Nurani, do you think that we should actually go into a little bit more details of the contract at this stage and consult the community? Um, sorry, maybe I wasn't very clear. I think in, essentially it's actually quite similar to the IPR issue. Uh, but I don't think we need to develop uh, language here. That is up to the lawyers to do. But of course, if we're going to give instructions to the lawyers, we need to give them the content. Uh, so for example, something that came out of the right community was that if we're entering, entering into a contract with ICANN, that we feel also need to be become more accountable, uh, then we need to put in, um, put in wording, we need terms, that gives, uh, that makes the IANA operator accountable to us, the community. Um, so for example, what I'm suggesting is that, so, so for example, a, a contract that is, uh, that cannot be terminated or a contract that can be terminated, those are the types of things that we should put in there, not develop the, the actual uh, language, but to seek community input on should there be conditions of this or that sort? Should there um, should uh, should we put in requirements, or should there should it be a renewable contract, periodically renewable contract, etc.? Those high-level principal issues need to come from the community. That will give guidance then to the lawyers to develop the, the correct language. Oh, thank you, Nirani, uh, for this clarification. And I, so I think I think we all agree on um, including those um, principles. On should we in, um, include um, terms of um, uh, should we actually allow the uh, the IANA operator to uh, delegate to another organisation, or what would be the kind of um, termination clause to be included, and things like that. Um, I don't see too much of a difference from Michael's suggestion in, in, in the way that 
I think there are certain principles that we think is important that we assure. And then I think to assure those principles, there may be like multiple different approaches. Um, maybe this approach is possible, this option is possible. And then I think that's basically up to the lawyers um, on what approach would be most effective rather than the community to um, go into the details of such approach. Um, that, that, that's my personal opinion and um, observation. Yes, so you're not disagreeing with Michael. Okay, thank you, Nirani. Um So then maybe we can uh, try to list um, the conditions that we think are important, which may not be um, detailed enough in our current proposal at this stage, and then um, seek for the community's opinion um, on, on the global uh, NRO list. Okay, that's agreed, Nirani, thank you. So I also see comment from Michael that high-level principles can provide direction for the legal team and without need for specific detailed language and maybe specific um, approach as well. Yeah, and details can be worked out later. So, um, thank you, John, um, so and Paul for agreeing with this. So I think it would be useful for. So this is um, this is the CEOs and the board boards. Um, for the CEOs. Okay, Paul. So that's for the CEOs to make the final decision. That's how I interpreted your comment. Um, yeah, sorry, Izumi. I, I shouldn't have touched it. I, maybe I can just be clear. I was t typing too quickly. Um, I, I very much agree with what Narani and, 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 and Michael are, are stating here. And I agree. Having the, the pieces uh, pointed out there are fine. But I think, you know, if we go into the semantics of exactly what has to happen there, I do think this is for the RIR CEOs and the boards to uh, decide together with their legal teams. Understood. Um, thank you for this clarification, Paul. So I think uh, we, we might want to uh, take a look again in what we've described in terms of the contract, whether this is uh, sufficient um, in providing some of the uh, principles that would uh, help guide um, the legal team and finally for the CEOs to make the decision um, in approving the actual contract. Um, so would anybody be willing to uh, volunteer to work on this listing? Uh, what, uh, reviewing whether we have uh, enough elements described and then uh, listing a couple of um, potential principles that should be included, which is uh, currently not listed. Um, I don't see any volunteers at this stage. Um, so I'll just uh, let me move to another uh, topic review team, and then I'll come back to this. And then if there's no volunteer at this stage, maybe we can uh, ask for volunteer on the uh, on the mailing list. So and then we I am actually conscious of time as well. We only have five minutes left, and then I do want to cover this uh, review team issues. But there are actually a couple of. Um, good, important issues that's being raised are newly on the mailing list. So after we go through the review team, I, I do want to quickly cover this and then ask for your um, ask for the Chris team opinions, whether we want to cover this at the call today or we want to do this uh, later. Paul. Thank you, uh, so Paul. Thank you. So you are volunteering to um, take this uh, drafting, the, the contract part, um, at right. Yes. Thank you very much, Paul. That's really helpful. Yes, Thank you so much. Volunteered there, and just to save us some time from the list, then uh, we're happy to take this. We will put this. We will put these uh, bits together for you, Azumi. Thank you. So helpful, Paul. So uh, let's move to um, review team uh, issue. So again, um, Alan, would you mind to give us an update of the status? Uh, yes, so I sent a message to the IANA transfer list um, 
about what we discussed in our previous teleconference that we thought that the review team should be separate from the NRONC. And um, I got some feedback that um, people in the community don't seem to agree with that. They think that the NRONC already exists and that it would be reasonable to, to give it this extra task. Um, but that doesn't seem to be a strong opinion. Um, the, the feedback seems a little mixed that people would would like it to be done by the NRONC but also have no objection to be, it being an independent organization. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's still not clear. Thank you for this uh, um, summary. And again, that is consistent with my observation as well. Um, so I'd like to maybe, um, I, I do want to hear your feedback about this as well, but I do want to quickly uh, share other issues that have been listed, um, newly listed, and then um, go back um, to you to which part of the issue that we want to discuss at the call today, and then maybe um, some of the issues we, we can um, discuss in the next call on the 5th. So let me just uh, quickly go through the um, hand up from Nurani. Apologies for, jump, for jumping in. I'm aware of, of that we're getting very close to our closing time. I just wanted to see that my interpretation of the comments on, on if, if you were re referring to the comments from Hans Peter Holen on the globalist, my interpretation was slightly different. It was, uh, I think he was reasoning that you could already give it to the NRO and C, and C, but really, uh, maybe it would also make sense to set up a separate body um, that, that would ensure then our own seat that it, to stick to its mandate. So I don't think there was a strong opposition um, or any opposition really, yeah. but that was my interpretation. Thank you for this clarification, oh, very helpful. And um, yes, so I think um, there, there seems to be n nobody feels quite strongly about the need to need for the NRO and C to uh, take this role. So um, I think that's quite up to, not up totally, um, I think it's, uh, we can decide as Christine what makes sense and then try to go back to the community and explain our rationale. So thank you for the clarification, Ronnie. Um, so uh, I'd like to go to the new issues that are being listed on, uh, from and, uh, basically from Andrew Dobb. So would you um, go to the Chris team website and then uh, look at the link from the seventh meeting where it has the latest version of IANA summary discussion um, with the date um, 0201, 2015. So there's a couple of um, a very important points listed um, raised from Andrew Dahl um, on the 30th of December. Let me just quickly go through them all. So um, the first one um, that is um, on the Excel sheet A14, um, and then issue effect on the existing MOUs. Um, he's listed NLO MOU and ASO MOU, whether um, these existing contract will be um, will be affected by this uh, transition. And I think Alan has already responded that um, this is not affected by the NTIA transition. And um, that's as far as we got so far about this issue. And then um, the second issue that's been raised is review process on the IANA function, whether we should include more details about review process on the IANA function for the number of resources, such as frequency of the review to be conducted, um, disclosure of review report, uh, whether the review report should be disclosed, um, or whether review committee um, selection uh, process should be conducted in an open and transparent manner. And these basic high-level principles um, that I've listed in this um, chart, um, you can see the details in C15 as well as this actual comment. So that's something that he raised. Um, so basically to clarify a couple of high-level things um, for the review process on the IANA function, especially related to SLA. And then um, 
Another point that he's raised is RIR accountability. So he thinks that uh, RIR themselves should be accountable to the community uh, if we go through this transition. So maybe we should consider some kind of mechanism to assure this, um, such as we'll, we should we have some mechanism to proactively con confirm um, whether um, the, R the do the review process. That's a, that's a question that he's raised as an example. And then um, another point that he's raised, so he, he's raised a couple of points. Um, 18B is determining support for the final proposal to ICG. I think this is very important that we discuss this. That, so how, do we, how does the Chris team actually determine um, that there is sufficient support for our final proposal? So um, do we actually try to set up a way to gather comments from the community and then we actually submit this together with a proposal to ICG? That's an example that he's listed. Let's go to um, 19B. So that's um, describing, that's, that's more like a details of the proposal. So uh, we should describe details of the global process, our Christine process in section six. I think that can be actually be addressed by somebody working on this. 20B, um, so he's, he wants us to suggest the second draft to the mailing list um, within an email text format. I think the idea is for people to see the actual test by email and be able to uh, respond proactively rather than clicking the link. That's more another admin related issue. Um, 21B is, um, this is another good suggestion. Um, he's suggesting to organize some kind of real time events to facilitate discussion. Um, so maybe we can have some kind of interactive online webinar type of event where people can give us feedback and then have discussions to accommodate all members of the community to, um, um, to join the discussion. I think these are the new points that's being raised by um, Andrew. And I'd like to quickly cover a really um, easy one, uh, which is 20B, to post the um, mailing this with an email um, text format. Um, I think that can be done quite quickly, even with the current version, the current editorial version, and um, see if there's anybody feels um, against this idea. Hand from John. And yeah, Andrew. Uh, we just wanted to say, uh, Andrew, because Andrew uh, you know, pinged me uh, privately on this, the the 21 uh, B the real time events. Um, his comment was that uh, him being on the west coast of uh, of the U S. that it's really inconvenient for him to just get up to listen to calls, and that he thinks we should try to have um, at least one call with participation and a, and at a different time zone, different times that would be better for the time zones that are inconvenient right now. That's all. Understood, and thank you for this um, clarification, John. Um, so maybe we can. Um, we we are actually past uh, five minutes from our initial plan, but um, if every, everybody can um, is okay to stay behind a few more minutes, may I suggest to um, extend our call for another additional fifteen minutes, um, and then we want to cover some of the core important issues that's being raised. Okay, I'm not seeing any objections. And I also see a comment from um, Wendor that this team So, okay, so Mwendo is um, commenting on the earlier point about um, the role of NRMC. Um, some members of the community are, feel that we should have urgent or use of resources. And and I think um, when you're saying that we should settle for a new review team instead of reusing NRNC. So thank you for this comment, Mwendo. 
Um, so um, I do want to um, cover this um, review team issue since Mwendo, Mwendo has um, uh, raised this, and then I think Murani has made the clarification that there's no strong concern against um, creating a separate uh, review team, although people do feel um, it might be useful to have to make use of the existing resources. So um, let me confirm whether we still, um, given this uh, community feedback situation, does it still make sense to everybody that we still separate uh, the review team from NROMC since the, the actual function of reviewing the service level and then um, reviewing the global po uh, policy process is a different matter? Or do you, does anybody feel that we should take a different approach uh, from what we initially suggested? I, I don't see any comments um, from the Chris team. So I, I do um, assume that the current direction is let's stick with the initial um, uh, uh, initial position, given that there's no strong opposition about the way we proceed, and uh, we, we do have the basic position to separate the global uh, PDP and the service level review. So um, let's continue with taking this approach. And then uh, related to this, um, um, to Andrew's suggestion about real-time events to facilitate discussion. Um, I think he, his suggestion was perhaps after the second, uh, we published the second um, initial draft, um, it might be good to have this um, event organized to basic, explain the basic idea about a proposal. Um, I think it's a good idea that we can, um, we can consider to incorporate. And uh, I think the question may be timing, whether we should do this after we publish the initial um, draft or we make use of this opportunity to uh, receive more feedback for our, for our draft before we publish the eighth, um, we publish the second draft on the eighth. So um, how many people prefer we, we conduct this after we publish the second draft? You're running. Uh, thank you. Um, I would just, um, well, I think it, I think it's a, a, a great idea to, to, to ask for more input in, in, in different ways. Um, I do think there's, I have two concerns with, with the suggestion. One is that uh, we have tried to be very clear about um, the process um, by which we gather the community's input, um, and I'm, I'm just l slightly concerned that by by adding a new thing, we might create confusion about how does this fit within the process, and and what will happen to any input that comes in so late, and and um, and how does this fit into any other uh, input that we've received earlier. Uh, especially since we've been very clear about that we want everyone to provide their input on, on the global mailing list. Um, I also wonder why, um, if, if people have not given that uh, feedback through the existing channels, uh, what, how do we handle any new feedback that comes in uh, then through a teleconference or, or something like that? My second concern, I guess, is, is the timing in that, again, we, we have a very short timeline. And uh, after the second draft is, is published, which is um, very soon, <laughs> then uh, we don't have a lot of time between that and, and the final, the wrap up and uh, et cetera. How do we as a CRISP team then manage that input and, and do we then take that back to the global mailing list and try to get a discussion about it, etc. So um, some, some concerns about process and, so, and some concerns about uh, the, the, the timing. Thank you. Thank you, Nurani. Very good point. And before I answer um, this, um, let's go to Alan. 
Uh, yes, I agree with everything Nurani said. And I'd like to add that a teleconference with very many participants will be very difficult to handle logistically. Thank you, Alan. So um, I think it might I think it would it might create more confusion if we take this as an opportunity to an agreement from Paul. If we um, make use of this opportunity as a way of uh, collecting community feedback, so let's not uh, go to this direction unless anybody else feels differently. And um, yes, we, we do have the channels nicely pointed out. So um, let me um, ask. Um, another question related to this. Suppose that um, we make this um, opportunity to share the idea behind um, a proposal and then receive any questions that community may have and then um, point to the NRO discussions list for further feedback. Would that still uh, cause concerns for, uh, for the press team or um, would you think that this is uh, something um, worth considering? Yes, um, so to re repeat my question, um, have kind organized some kind of session to have online en uh, engagement, but the focus is not for commit or collecting feedback about a proposal, but um, to explain the idea behind a proposal verbally and then receive any questions the community may have. So if the community has any specific feedback to a proposal, then um, they should actually comment on the NL or the global NLO um, mailing list rather than give, giving us feedback at this um, engagement uh, session. So the idea is more like um, helping the community understand the idea behind the, um, the proposal. Would, would, that, would people feel more comfortable to organize this kind of session or people think that we should not organize any kind of um, this, um, this engagement um, at all? Uh, this is Alan. I still don't see how the logistics will work for such a thing. Thank you, Alan. And I also have a question from Paul. How will you avoid you commenting input and not in favor? Yes, a large participant would likely to be difficult logis logistically and create confusion. So, okay. So I think the general feeling is that um, it might create more confusion than helping the community. So uh, we would uh, actually um, focus on online engagement rather than having um, some kind of additional um, engagement opportunities. So um, to respond to um, respond to Andrew, I think um, John has um, explained to us that he, he it's difficult for him to actually participate um, real time uh, during our call. So maybe our suggestion would be we do provide the recordings so he can listen to our recordings and then he, um, he's very welcome to um, share his um, feedback on the um, NRO mailing list. So let's uh, make suggestion to Andrew with this direction. Um, does anybody have any additional comments on, related to this point? No. Okay. So um, another thing I'd like to cover from Andrew's uh, comment is how do we actually um, um, confirm the, the uh, consensus from the last um, proposal? But actually, I think we, we still have time for this. So maybe we can um, discuss this at the next uh, call, um, unless somebody feels very strongly that we should discuss this today. Um, and I think another point that might be worth um, confirming the general direction would be review process on the IANA function. He's suggesting that it might be worth including some of the details about the general principles on the review to be conducted, whether the review report will be disclosed um, to the community and then um, 
to clarify that review selection process will be conducted in an open and transparent manner, um, things like this. And to me, I think except for defining frequency of review, all the things that he's listed seems to be quite high-level principles that are quite consistent with, um, with our practice today. So I'm quite comfortable uh, myself to list those um, suggestions in the proposal. But um, I think we're quite short of time to, I think, make a decision at the call now. So unless um, people have immediate reactions to this, um, I did actually create another thread on the mailing list, a separate thread on the mailing list, and you can see the thread title from the Excel file. So please um, provide your comments, inputs on the mailing list. Um, I would, um, it would be helpful if you could provide your feedback before the next uh, meeting on the 5th. Hand up from the right. Apologies for, for taking the floor again. I just wanted uh, to say uh, as a very quick general comment that I think that all the points you raised were very good and important. So um, while we might not have time to discuss them here, I think it's good to, to try to address them properly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nurani. I, I very much agree. So uh, please do um, give your input on the mailing list, Dr. Christine. And then, actually, on this one more point I'd like to confirm uh, with Christine. As you know, there's been a comment raised from um, JP Nick, and I have intentionally not added this on the list because um, it might be better for other members of the Chris team to um, put this together uh, on the list. And I do prefer somebody else other than myself to handle discussions on this part. So um, I'd like to confirm if there's any volunteers who's willing to um, keep track of the issues and then handle discussions related to issues listed from JP Nick. Thank you, Alan, for volunteering. So um, to confirm what's expected, um, it would be helpful if you could, you could add this, um, the issues that's being raised uh, from JP Nick on this Excel sheet. Um, each issue that's been listed on the mail, and then if you could uh, facilitate discussions within Chris team and then communicate with them um, on the global list, um, that would be very helpful. I hope this is clear to Alan, and thank you again for volunteering. It's really helpful. Yep, okay, Zumi, I will edit the um, Excel sheet and um, try to keep that updated and coordinate discussions. Thank you. And then, um, so the remaining agenda topics is 4C and next meeting. So um, regarding this Excel sheet um, updating, um, I'm, I think um, John and um, Wandua had volunteered to work on the initial Excel sheet part. And um, I'd like to confirm whether both of you are comfortable to um, be the volunteer for keeping this list updated, or would you do you feel that you 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 may not be able to commit to con, um, continuing to keep the list updated? Um, so, John, I'm wonder how do you feel about this? Uh, this is John. Um, now that I, you know, I, I made a, a template and tried to put stuff on there, and now that you have it down to uh, what we want to see on there, um, Izumi, I think, uh, I mean, I don't have any problems with tracking issues and putting them, putting them on there, and and maybe sending it to you or to the to the Chris list, and uh, you know, you can then edit it if you need to, or one die, whatever. How do you feel? Okay, um, what would be the easiest for me is I, I'll continue to make sure any list that, um, any post that's on the, um, the global list, um, I can continue to create thread uh, per issue and then seek for discussions. I'll, be, I'll facilitate discussions uh, within the Chris team on the issues that have been uh, updated. And it would be um, 
helpful if possible. So based on what's being posted on the first team, just simply um, you know, add information like um, that's listed here, initial post and then issue summary. Uh, discussions on the, the island list, that's not a must, and then pristine status. Uh, I think we can, we can confirm based on status of discussions on the mailing list and the, the call. So if somebody is able to do that, that would be quite helpful. But if there are no volunteers, um, I, I can also do this as well. So um, I, I wouldn't want to pressure um, too much. So um, would, how, how do you think, John? And I'm wondering. But that's what I just volunteered to do. Thank you very much, John. It's really helpful. Okay. So thank you, um, thank you for co continuing to work on this. Yeah. So then um, let's confirm the um, date for the next meeting. Thank you, Alan. Um, so you can send your update to updates to John. That's really helpful, Alan. Um, so that's including um, J. Phoenix's comments. And then the next meeting, I think we'll have the meeting planned on the 5th and um, seeing how much new issues that we're seeing and there are a couple of issues that we haven't really um, reached a conclusion yet. I do want to um, have the meeting on the 5th on Monday as initially planned. Um, and um, does anybody have comments, questions? Um, from Mirani, uh, you will send out a proposed new text on the, I, the NTIA requirements within the coming two hours on section five. Thank you, Mirani. That's really helpful. And then I think um, so. I actually got a confirmation from um, Aaron and Lacknick uh, region about um, adding the process on section five. And I'm actually happy to work on section six. Um, the comment from Andrew Dull. Um, to add uh, the global process related to um, Chris Teams, so I can work on that. So I'll, I'll send you a summary of the status to you, John, so that you can update the list. Um, so <laughs> sorry for just going back and forth. So going back again for the next meeting date. Uh, so let's have a meeting on the 5th of um, Monday, the 5th of January, as planned. And then, um, unless there are any other uh, comments, questions, um, I'd like to join the meeting. So let's see if there are any last uh, comments from the Chris team. No? I don't see okay, any, uh, any comments. Um, yes? This is John. I just, uh, you know, just like, like Alan said, he'd send me, anybody that has any of the uh, actions or the columns or the issues on the tracking list, if they have anything they would like added, just send it to me and I'll add it in. Thank you for this Thanks. comment, um, John. Thanks. So I do encourage our team members to send information to John. Um, so that seems to be it. Oh, yes. So we are, we are to send all of our text bits to, to John or just things that you want updated. No, no, in, in uh, the text, no, no. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I, I, sorry, I lost you there. Uh huh. Yeah. Thanks for this question. So, the, John is helping us update the issues list, the Excel list. So, um, the text will be, um, Michael will continue to be the pen uh, for updating the actual um, drafting of the proposal. So, so thank you for clarification question, Paul. So um, if there are no other comments or questions, I'd like to adjourn the meeting. And thank you so much for joining um, at this time of the year, still holiday season for, them, for some of you. And um, have, a nice, uh, have a nice day and have a nice evening, depending on your time. Thank you. Thank you.